Hello everybody, I have myself a brand new microphone, and I thought I would test it out by doing something a little bit less intensive than a Let's Read of Dwarf Fortress. I'm going to show you how to automate Batania's Pure Daisy with Applied Energistics 2. Now this way has a lot of advantages over the way I see most people do it with Steve's Factory Manager. The main one being, uh, it's much simpler once you get it working. To start off, we're going to make ourselves an interface here, as you would expect for most AE2 devices. But we're going to link it up with export and import buses, like so, because we are making this into not just one, but two separate subnets here. Now, the reason we want it to be two subnets instead of even just one I think I want this a little bit wider. Yeah, because I want... Let's measure this out. Uh, we're going to want two subnets because there's something that I think is, quite frankly, a bug. But we'll discuss that when we get to it. For now, I'll just show you that we can hook all these up here and give it all power. And there we are. Just like a family reunion, everyone is here, but no one is talking to each other. And that's the way we want this. Now, over here on the import side, we're going to want to run these cables down here. And I think you all know what I'm going to put down here. I am going to put down these formation plan. I'm not going to put them on the bottom. I am going to put down these formation planes. Formation planes are AE2's block placer. Once you have these things down, they will just put a block in place, and you can even tell them what blocks you want. So what we want is for them to place our stone and our wood, and it would be a pain to go around doing that manually, so we'll just take a memory card, save these settings, and copy them to all the other panes. And, yep, that's all copied. And so we now have to configure our import bus. Our import bus we're going to put on a capacity card so it has more than one item. And we're just going to put on a single acceleration card so it pulls at least eight items at a time. It's going to import stone and wood. And you'll see that if we put, say, 16 stone in here, it goes right into the formation planes. Which, of course, in the center here, we can place our pure daisy. So, we have stone going in, but how are we going to get living stone out of it? Well, we're going to do that with our annihilation planes. These puppies are the opposite. They'll break down blocks below them, and they'll put them into your AE network. And it is getting dark. Let us fix that. But, there's one problem here. You can't configure them. I'm right-clicking like crazy. These things cannot be whitelisted. But there's a little bit of a trick here. See, annihilation planes can only dump items, they'll only pick up items, if they have a place on their local network to store them. So if I link them into their network here, you see they're getting power, they're online, but they aren't, they aren't breaking Excuse me, their blocks. They need to have an ME chest or drive, or what have you, to dump them in. Which we can just put right here, and because that doesn't have a storage cell, they won't dump right away. But don't just jump into that right away, because if we just put our 1K storage cell, you don't need a huge storage cell, because this is just buffer storage. Well, it, it would pull the living stone now, but if we just put a... Uh, storage cell in there, it would pick up anything on there. It would pick up stone, it would pick up wood, it wouldn't wait for it to change. So we need to take this storage cell into a cell workbench, and we need to tell it to only accept living rock and living wood. And if we then take that and put that in the cell, and if we further go to our export bus, and we uh, give it the same setup as our import bus, except we tell it to export living rock and, yeah, living stuff. <laughs> then we can put the cell in here, and it'll pick up, it'll pick up 
all that, but when the when the next set of stone is imported, it won't be picked up because there's nowhere on the local net for it to be dumped. It doesn't count our connection over into our main network there, which just has unpartitioned drives. And because it's dumping into an interface, we get our living rock get put into our main network. And everything is just hunky-dory. This is all it takes. This is your entire automated system. Much less set up than Steve's factory manager. Although there is one thing to watch out for. If I take myself a network tool here. Got two of them. Stupid mouse. My mouse is breaking down. If I take a network tool here, you'll see that the uh, Annihilator network is costing me almost 30 RF per tick. The Formation network is... This is costing me almost 60 RF per tick in total. Which isn't insurmountable, but it's not nothing. So early game, you might want to, say, have these things on some sort of switch where you can turn it off when you're not using them, because these things are going to suck down the same amount of power whether they're currently running or not. And if you're really, really good, you can put these on some sort of redstone timer so they say only run for five seconds every minute and a half or so, because the only time they need to be powered up is when they're moving these blocks around. The pure daisy just runs completely for free. But that's more advanced stuff. This is the basic theory. This is how it's going to work. And, of course, you can go into here. You can take your patterns. You can code it into the interface. It'll all just work just fine and dandy. So... That's how this works when it goes right, when you have these two subnets here. But uh, there's a reason you want two subnets. You want to keep your formation planes and your annihilation planes from seeing each other. Because if I go out here, you'll see another world that I've, uh, that I've already prepared where I set up the system slightly differently. Uh, just give this a moment to load. I set this thing up with just one subnet here. And it has all the formation and annihilation planes on the same network. Uh, setup is completely the same otherwise. And you'll see, if we put down stone, it works just fine. But for some reason, if we put down wood, we start to have problems. What I think is happening is the formation planes are doing some sort of pull command, which is opening them up as a valid inventory that the, for that the annihilation planes can place stuff into. But I have no idea why that's only happening for wood and not for stone. And you'll see that uh, this isn't maybe necessarily totally unusable. If I put down a full set of eight wood here, then there's no planes doing that pull operation. But the pure daisy doesn't always purify everything at the same time, so you might end up... You're, you're almost inevitably going to end up with a point where, say, one plane becomes free and then everything else bugs up. And it's just going to get stuck all the time. It's going to give you absolute hell. Use two separate subnets. Hopefully in the future... This behavior will be resolved one way or the other, because the fact that it's acting completely differently for two different materials tells me that something somewhere is terribly borked, but I don't know what. And even more, hopefully, in the future, we'll be able to get a whitelist filter on these annihilation planes. That would make this so much easier. But other than that, you can derp your way into getting this to work with two separate subnets. So... Thank you, everyone, for listening. I hope that this short little lesson will be helpful in your endeavors. Uh, please give me... Yeah, see? This, this just messes up. Thank you for demonstrating my point, Beer Daisy. You are the hero of this story. Yeah. Uh, please tell me how the new mic sounds... I will be continuing Let's Read Head Shoots, a great tale of uh, a dwarf fortress. Uh, a great tale of dwarf fortress, yes. It, it is great, and it is dwarfy, and it is fortressy.
and it is loaded with magma and adamantine, and it messes with spikes of gneiss. If you like Dwarf Fortress, stick around. Otherwise, just tell me how you like this and, like, get on with your life. I'll just be here, being lonely with my with my pretty flower. <sighs> Good night, everybody! <laughs>